Over the next three days, we're going to be travelling from Spain to France by sailboat as part of an epic voyage around the Mediterranean Sea. The dolphin! Is that a good omen? Living on board, finding the most quaint towns and best eats along Europe's coastline. Yeah. <laughs> We've travelled around Mallorca so far and on this episode, we're saying goodbye to civilization for the next 72 hours. It's perfect conditions for it. The plan is to keep within 60 miles of the coast, which is safe harbour in case of an emergency. Oh, target has entered guard zone one. Then at the end of our trip, after cooking at sea, healing on ridiculous angles, having a few deep and meaningfuls. So I have a weird thing. And a night sail to remember. Yep, ready! We will arrive to Bonifacio, one of the most beautiful, bougie towns with the most brutal bays. Back up into traffic. John, I think we've got more things to worry about here. That was just insane. Buckle up. Messed up. When was the last time you actually went completely off grid? Because that island behind us there in the distance is the last we're going to see of land for three whole days, which has me thinking, what is it going to actually feel like to be detached from friends, from family and civilization, with no internet and no connection to the outside world? I guess we're going to find out. We're about to sail 300 nautical miles from Mallorca to Corsica, so we're traveling from Spain to France. And to put it into perspective, this will be John and my biggest crossing yet. So we know this is gonna be super special and we've decided to leave at the break of dawn. We're really excited to visit a new country. Obviously we have been in Spain since we arrived here from Australia. We have had our fair share of paella and Spanish food. John's come up with a plan because there's hardly any wind to sail. It's perfect conditions for it. Definitely. I'm going to try and put it on. Okay, ready? Yeah. I'm going to have to put that away for a bit. John's heading to the bow. Luckily, he doesn't get seasick because he is going to be up there for a little while. So the sail is a code zero. We've never used a code zero before, ever. It's stored in the captain quarters, the fourth cabin, which is a secret room, if you will. It is huge, hey? It is massive. This is actually, this is actually a skipper's quarter. There's an option here. See, there's two bunk beds. So yeah, there are two beds, so this would fall down and then make one bed right here and then the other one's just below it. You're like six foot, Kel, to this yeah. space. Just measured myself. Yeah. <laughs> and in this corner is a whole head and a toilet and more shelves and a shower. See the shower door? I just think this is crazy that there's like this nice glass like... Oh yeah, wow. Shower door down here. Because the sail stored in there is so heavy, we're going to utilize the winches to do all the heavy lifting. So we're just currently winching up this code zero. John Keep going. In John's hands are what we call blocks and he'll attach them to anchor points on board. Oh. Like this. As for the Code Zero, it has a huge surface area. So in these light conditions, it'll allow us to sail faster and upwind. John just yelled out, it's huge. And I'm just looking at it and I'm seeing all these lines everywhere. He's about to rig it all up and I'm in awe to think that literally a short time ago we were learning how to sail on Tupana and now we're here working out how to use a code zero for the very first time on this absolutely beautiful beast. I hope the conditions are so calm that we can get this sail up and show you how majestic the seas really are out here as we make our way to Bonifacio which is actually in France on the southern tip of Corsica. And within 30 minutes being off grid, it does not take long for nature to be right on our doorstep. Dolphins on the bow. Wow! Is that a good omen? I hope so. Oh, wow! That's amazing. John is literally right on the bow at the moment. Oh, wow. So if you're new here to this channel, welcome. You've already met John. I'm Christina. I just stole John's hat. And with all my yelling with the dolphins. Oh, morning, Cal. Hi. Meet Kelly. John's just setting up the code zero, so it's all very exciting out oh here. Oh my god. I'm glad I woke up. <laughs> it is really exciting because oh 
John and I have never used a Code Zero before. We've used a Spinnaker, which I think is similar. With no experience, we're doing some last minute research while we can. I can't believe you still have 5G out here. That All is right. crazy. Look how far away we are from land. You can't even... So we're going to have to fill it back up. So this will be good practice. So you want to ease this, I'll go pull it in on the... Oh the yeah, front. that'd be amazing. We'll just practice it because I'm going to have to move this back. What could possibly go wrong? It's great, he just told me he can see how it all works. So that's really cool. There's just one thing left to do and that's to hoist it up the halyard. High or low speed? All right. He said put it on high, we gotta get it right to the top. This will be our fourth sail secured on board. Thank you, Janoe, for putting your trust in us. <laughs> and thank you guys too for your support this year. On a side note, I filmed a live Q&A for all our patrons this week. So to unlock all our extra content, join us over on Patreon after the episode. See the little curling drum? So to bring it in, you just, you gotta, you gotta lay, sit here and pull it in like this. Really? twist it up. That's why it's gonna be really tight so it wraps well. Then basically we've got two sheets that go out there around the outside of all the lifelines through the block up to the winch. But before we do that, we might put these other sails away. Yeah. I think it's all ready to go. Careful. I'm feeling nervous. All right, this goes slow. This is the moment of truth, everybody, the first time. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, it didn't look quite right to me. No? no. <laughs> <laughs> While we trimmed the sails, we eventually ventured further out to sea and our phone signal was lost. Despite being so far offshore, we still had to keep a lookout for traffic 24-7, visually and with the help of our instruments on board, equipped with AIS. This is interesting. The sky and the cruise ship and we are all kind of converging at exactly the same time. It's all happening. It's all happening at once, folks. Oh, target has entered guard zone one. We came up with a pretty loose roster, sharing the load and night watch, rotating between the three of us every few hours. John was doing the route planning. Kel and I would do the meal prep. That is wild. <laughs> we cooked this on these two little pans. We have to also get the mess because that's just, <laughs> a lot has happened. Cashews, eggs, broccoli, capsicum, zucchini, bamboo shoots, noodles, some sambal, soy sauce, chili sauce. But the sleep deprivation and potentially a lack of connectivity to the outside world <laughs> did make us go a little gloopy <laughs> at times. <laughs> Yeah, oh my god, it's only been like one day. <laughs> so let's go serve it up. Go and get John's reaction. Oh wow, oh my goodness. That is, you, you guys could compete. Good. Yum. <laughs> <laughs> What's the verdict, guys? Yum. Out of 10. I can't believe we're sitting here eating a meal that you prepared and we're doing eight, occasionally eight and a half knots. It was a tad chaotic, but we broke glass. Some things have fallen off the gunners. Yeah, we've been a whole ordeal. So at the halfway mark, a day and a half into the sail to Bonifacio, the winds finally started to pick up as the sun was setting. Oh, sun is set. We knew now was a good time to furl away that code zero. Look at that. Did you see me doing 9 9? Nine, nine. Come on, 9.3. Oh, we're gonna get 10. Because soon it would become unruly and impossible to control with a second layer of danger, the impending darkness of the night. If we have to put it away at night, someone's gonna go up on the bow. There's no doubt we need to fell away this code zero, but first we need to tell you a little quirk about John. I don't even think any of his closest friends know this about him. Can you just press pause and tell everyone what happens to you? So I have a weird thing with dark chocolate. <laughs> it's <trying> to <laughs> When I eat dark chocolate, most of the time, it makes me sneeze. So I googled this, and some people have a reaction to <laughs> cause them to sneeze from eating dark chocolate and also, this is even weirder, bright sunlight. So like people can walk outside in a bright sunlight and immediately start sneezing. How weird is that? I think the chocolate thing is weirder. Really? Mm -hmm. No, I think I need more. Is your nose ticklish at all? A little bit. Is it? <laughs> yeah, like I feel a little bit, but I'm not gonna sneeze. <laughs> I'm just telling you guys I'm not gonna sneeze. <laughs> Sorry. 
I'm bummed. Nine nuts. Feel free to share your weird quirk in the comments below. I'm sure there are gonna be a few good ones out there. But anyway, it's almost sunset and we really do need to put this code zero away. Put this in your pocket. I hope I have the strength. Are you serious? Wow. That right there is a mini EPUB. We usually put it in our pockets during night watch in case we were to go overboard. Oh my God. Okay. Probably I'm pretty unco. Maybe I should. Where do you want to go? Sorry. I mean, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going pretty like, uh, when you look out, we realize how Yeah, fast okay, I'll have the rescue me. I don't know where, can I put it down my pants? No, you can't. Put it in my bra. No, it's okay. gonna fly out. Well, just one of you point towards me and hit the man overboard button, please. We're going very fast. So okay, all right, let's do this. Take your time. Pull. Sit down, lay it over your lap. Yeah. Figure out which one it is. Wait until I've got the load off it, so I'll let it out quite away. Okay. And then you just gotta pull it in. There'll be a bit of load on it. And what happens if I can't? At that stage, you're just gonna wrap it back up. Yeah, and then we'll, and then we'll swap. Yeah, it'll, okay. just, it'll take a long time. Okay. Don't flip, don't flip. The isolation at this point is really getting to me. I feel like I'm a real sailor. Well, there are waves up here. I felt like a sailor, so now I just really had to prove myself. No, well, now that I've not, I know that you've had problems with it, it's going to take a little bit of the load off. Good idea. Okay, let it out. in that sail. Yeah, it's a lot. Like, that's wild. Plus five knots. Yeah, I know. How did you go pulling uh, it in? Was it yeah, hard? No, it was a little hard. Yeah, it was harder than it was earlier today. So, I'm just on night watch. Unfortunately, we just had to put the motor back on. Um, we had been sailing, which was really lovely, uh, but the wind just completely died off. But I just thought I'd say hello because we're just motoring through some amazing bioluminescence. They almost look like jellyfish, it's pretty incredible. John's currently just sleeping down here on the couch in the galley area. It's pretty quiet. We're uh, not too far away from Bonavacio now. We're in uh, the final stages, less than 24 hours. In fact, we'll probably be there yeah, in about 12 hours. It'll be a pretty great journey. It feels like it's gone really fast. You say it was three days, but it honestly felt like two. We've been trying to sail as much as possible. If I had to put a percentage out, I'd say we probably sailed 50% of the time. And what a special arrival with this bioluminescence. I'm just stoked to see it. Actually smashing it. We're only like we keep heading in this direction. We're only like nine hours away from Saint Tropez. That's so crazy, like, hey? Yeah, Monaco and stuff like that. I know. It seems like kind of productive not going up there. Although, how'd you sleep? Yeah, really good. Did you? I only slept for what an hour and fifty minutes. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> I'll leave you to it. See you up there in a sec. Oh, I'll tell you about when something that happened. No, no, no. Um, these two patrol boats went past called Black Shark and Black Shark 2, going 30 knots. You know those like rubber dinghy things? Came oh, all. I don't know, they're black. I know, random. They came from uh, our bow. They whipped around two of them side by side. And now there's one that's about to go past and it's called Black Panther. Something like that anyways. And they looked like border force, which means we're getting closer to France. Now that it's my turn to rest though, I thought I'd point out that the toughest thing about Nightwatch is trying to then sleep throughout the day when your body clock is completely out of whack because you then get this second wave of energy but even though I'm overtired, I also become ravenous, constantly grazing. Perhaps it's also due to a bit of boredom as well. We've been offshore now for almost 72 hours and it has been wonderful. I have not washed my hair in like four days. <laughs> and to be honest, we've hardly cooked either. Back to the days when I was a waitress. <laughs> Back when I was a waitress. <laughs> Clearly she's still got it. We've been dancing <laughs> and healing. <laughs> Working and editing these videos on a lean. You can't. Oh, that's really good. Laundry duties have called. I don't know if the antibacterial toothpaste <laughs> combo with laundry pod will work, but Find out. And as the hours passed us by, the wind is essentially right on the nose. We only have six and a half knots of true wind speed. And it's only six hours left before we arrive to Bonifacio. There was plenty of time to reflect on life. Recently did a DNA test, John and I. Genetics. And it turns out that I am a sixth Italian, which is pretty cool. And John and my love life. John and I are actually like very opposite. If you've heard of like opposites can interact. Sometimes I question that theory. If you've watched our videos for a while, like I'm very crazy. John's very sensible. John's very analytical. I'm very creative. I'm in Miller now. He's a morning person. Every aspect of our lives is opposite. Even our love languages knowing my love language and knowing John's love language was so powerful, right? Essentially, if you don't know what love languages are, a love language is the way that you express and feel love. So there are five love languages. One of the love languages is words of affirmation. Another one is quality time, so spending quality time with another. Acts of service, gifts, and physical touch. They're the five love languages. And it turns out that John and my top ones are completely opposite from one another. So my top love language is words of affirmation. The comments and words mean enormously to me. They really hit me, my heart, and make me feel loved, right? To so get John to explain it. I would say it's pretty accurate. As a way of kind of trying to understand what makes other people tick and what they place importance on in a relationship. John's love language is quality time, so that's spending time with each other, focusing on the conversation, making sure that he realises that I've understood what he's saying and that I'm focused. Someone with my personality that's like a little bit crazy, a little bit ADD somewhat, it's, it's really difficult to connect with him for him. I felt like I was connecting because I was always crazy. Do you like words of affirmation? I've always struggled. It's one of my weaknesses. I've always struggled with compliments. My praises weren't connecting to him because his, one of his last love languages was words of affirmation. As the same as me, one of my last love languages was quality time. So we just were not vibing. But our second love language was physical touch, both of ours. So that was really lovely. Both of our last love languages were gifts. Physical gifts and stuff like that don't really like mean that much to us. But I just wanted to share that with you because I think it's really powerful to know what the love language is. And it completely transformed my relationship with John. And by sharing this with you, I hope that if you're in a relationship and you don't know what yours is or you don't know what your partner's is, it can be like really transformative. It's helpful to quantify that mm. and understand it. Rivers run dry. In the air. This is wild. Two dark days. Do you have a tear to spare? 
Okay, so we're getting so close to land now. I can hear phones dinging, messages are coming through. Civilization! And the crew have scrubbed up for the occasion. Did you take a shower as well? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, please. John, I smelled land. Did you really? I don't know, but I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Three days ago, John warned us. Smell land when you get close to it and you don't realize that that's what you're smelling. Did you smell land? Uh -uh. <laughs> While John practiced the new boat's name, <laughs> which means four winds in French, I freshened up too because Bonifacio is beautiful. I've just got these sheets in, and then Christina, I'm you go back to do you want to drop the halyard? Yep. And then I'll I'll bring we'll bring this in and we'll roll it up in the in the bag. Then we're done. It's yeah, sounds quick. good. Oh. How much faster is it taking it down and putting it up? Oh, I know. Hey, I wanted to say something. This is our first time sailing in France. Yeah, first time doing a passage between two countries. Yes. Oh my god. And gosh. we're going to do three in three days: Spain, Italy, and France. Because this is this is France here. This is Corsica, and then only like 10, 10 12 miles to the south is Sardinia, which is Italy, so that's cool. In two years, we've sailed Australia, we've sailed in Greece, we've sailed in the Bahamas. Yeah. Like, it just goes to show, you can start at any time. Any yeah. time. What do you mean, start at any time? Like, you're never too old. <laughs> you reckon you're old? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know why I say that is because... Uh. I didn't grow up Christina's sailing. Christina's having a little quarter life crisis. So I didn't grow oh, up. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you don't need to be sailing your whole life. If you want to get into it, you can get yeah. out here within like a year or two. Exactly. And it's funny, like a lot of people are like, oh, I hope you have a lot of experience in smaller boats before taking the 55. Totally. I've got to say that the 55, with the way it's set up, was easier to sail <laughs> than any other boat I've ever sailed. Yeah, and I that, agree. That's not many, but I've got to say it was pretty easy. And it sails fast and it's, yeah, it's just good fun. So I would ask, I'd be like, hey, John, do you want me to help you with the lines? He'd be like, no, nah, I've got it all the time. It's no. got rewinding winches, so you can, like, you can control every winch this guy. from both helm stations. So you don't, you don't really need to have anyone else on the other winch. So sometimes it's easy just to do it yourself with a push of a button. All right. Should, should we, we get this thing down? It's yeah, hot. It, it is, is hot. Like, it is, it's, there's a heat wave coming, so it's supposed to be, there's reports back home I've just heard, because we've just come across and had no reception for a few days, so I've just heard that they're expecting like weather in the 40s, so it's getting yeah. hot. That aircon's going to be working its butt off. Yeah, another luxury. The air conditioning just makes it infinitely more comfortable on those really hot days, doesn't it? So we just need to get the, um, bring the halyard down all the way to the bottom. And, and I'll pull this in at the front so it doesn't drop in the water. Hey, this is serious topic. Don't get the so hot. Don't Christina. get the shits. I just think that you're a really great captain. <laughs> what do you think about words of affirmation? I've always struggled with compliments. But quality time's good, right? Always. Yeah. You're good at giving compliments sometimes. <laughs> All right, let's put the coaster away. So it's getting hot. Okay. And so we're approaching Bonifacio, known for its location atop white limestone cliffs overlooking the Strait of Bonifacio, which separates Corsica from the island of Sardinia. So one side is France, the other is Italy. The narrow entrance to the port of Bonifacio is a dead end, so it's mayhem. Absolute chaos if you don't have a thruster or eyes at the back of your head. Back up into traffic. John, I think we've got more things to worry about here. Join us next week for the most thrilling mooring. That was nearly an accident. And medieval town that captures our hearts. And don't forget to join us over on Patreon to watch our Q&A ahead of Christmas.